This great city has been witness to many strange scenes, but none so staggering as the one that played out here beneath her slumbering streets just seconds ago. An evil space ape bent on world destruction, thwarted by a six-foot-tall dog and a rabbity thing with psychic power. A tidy conclusion to an improbable story, or so it would seem, for about five nanoseconds, until our heroes turn and see something so unexplainable, so horrifying, as to render evil space apes suddenly quaint. How could you, Sam? There you stand, a sickening grin on your face, your great hairy mitts clutched around my dear little silky white neck. Mother warned me it would come to this, but I couldn't bring myself to believe her. I could be wrong, Max, but I've got a hunch this isn't us. These horrifying skeletons are meant to convey a message of some sort. There's a story behind this grisly tableau. Aha, a note. What's it say? There's a story behind this grisly tableau. Look, a highly flammable reel of nitrate-coated film from the dawn of the age of cinema. I'll just pop it into this conveniently placed projector. No fair, Sam. You got to pick the movie last time. Shut up and enjoy the show, Max. egyptian -y. Hey, that looks just like... Thundering tin types of Teddy Roosevelt in a three-wheeled baby carriage with a bonus jar of mustache wax. That's none other than my great-grandpa Samoth, with your great-grandpa Maximus. I can't hear what they're saying. It's a silent movie, little buddy. Film before the invention of vocal cords. Can't find the volume knob, huh? Let me... No, get away. I want to mess with it. Come on, just oh, get, get off the... Mine, mine, mine. Uh, no. uh, 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 huh? Something's happening, Sam. My aura is going all squirrely. I feel it too, Max. Some irresistible force is pulling me through the frame of that movie. We've got it, little buddy. The toy box is ours. Along. Kringle. I want that toy box! This is one of those situations where it would be helpful to have a gun. Or psychic powers. Psychic powers, that's right. We keep forgetting you've got unexplainable psychic powers. Oh, yeah. Where the Sam Hilly you hiding? Come out or I'll shoot. If we do come out, you'll shoot anyway. What's your point? the way out. But how do we get there? It's teetering. Good old Charlie Hotep. Thanks to him, I am gifted with the miraculous ability to throw my voice into people and objects. Yeah, I'm still not sure ventriloquism counts as a psychic power. Ha! That sap Kringle will never find us in here. Ha! There you are! Watch out for falling squid! <laughs> Let's take this toy box and skedaddle, little pal. Champion ventriloquizing, Maximus. Now all we've got to do is read those hieroglyphics again and the door will open and we'll be golden! Right. Uh, you don't remember how to read hieroglyphics, do you, Maximus? <laughs> Fat chance! But you do, right, Sam? There once was an ancient inscription that had to be spoken Egyptian. We recited it great, so it opened a gate, and our enemies had a conniption. Props for originality. Oh, this is rich! Ho, 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 ho! <laughs> huh. That was... interesting. A little skimpy on character development. That can't be the whole story. There must be... yes! Oh, great. Did we just, like, watch the end of the movie first? No, I think that was the middle. Which one's the beginning? Not a clue. Which one do you want to try?
the usher see us? Nah, he's still fishing for us under the candy counter. Shh, show's about to start. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, devotees of the uncanny and the bizarre. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Monsieur Pepperwaite, and I bear great tidings, an archaeological discovery of earth-shattering proportions. My friends, I present to you the Sphinx. Ugh, it's horrible, Samoth. The face of pure evil. The stage is that way, schmucko. It is said she will yield her secrets only to one whose powers are equal to those of Samun Mak himself. Might you be that favored individual? I have come to your fair city today to issue a challenge. What you see before you is not merely a pasteboard facsimile, but a perfect recreation of the tomb's outer fortifications. To the one who makes it through the gate, I offer two tickets to Egypt and a chance for the adventure of a lifetime. You get any of that, Samoth? Prize for the guys who can bust through that thing. Busting things is our speciality. You read my mind, little buddy. The mermaid and the cockroach. Fresh from their tour of the great sewers of Europe. Shouldn't we be on our way to sunny Egypt by now? I'm feeling prematurely homesick. Look, Samoth, a quaintly dressed mole person reading a hieroglyphic newspaper. One of the colorful, unwashed immigrants, little pal. The city's teeming with huddled masses of them. <laughs> Comical strip, very funny. and a lagomorph take a nice walk on the Brooklyn Bridge, crosswise, and keep going. Aw, oh, don't you just want to tousle his little bald scalp? Go away! Have you seen this baby? Sure, she's right there on that milk carton. Excuse me, mister. No, no more toilet breaks till the job's done right, understand? We, um, uh, we're not your underlings. Huh? I got no statements for the press. I note with curiosity that your assistants are... Short. I'm in the middle of transitioning to an elf-based labor force. Uh, trying to help out, you know. <laughs> Give a disadvantaged ethnic group a leg up in the new world. Mighty generous. Hell, who am I fooling? They're cheap as dirt. Toss them a few chestnuts and a figgy pudding and they'll crawl a mile on broken glass. <laughs> How's the elf labor force working out for you so far? There's an old saying amongst us capitalists, you get what you pay for. Beard of snowy white, nose like a cherry. Haven't we met somewhere before? Fat chance. I don't make a habit of frequenting the greasy dives in this low rent neighborhood, but no doubt you've seen my mug splashed across the front page of your morning paper. Nicholas St. Kringle to spearhead Bobbles for Bratz Charity Drive. Nicholas St. Kringle named Philanthropist of the Millennium. Nicholas St. Kringle photographed in Love Nest with team of Swedish figure skaters. <laughs> How about a cookie, Kringle? Go away! Oh. It's just my pal here hasn't eaten in 72 hours. And you had such a kindly face. For the love of... Okay, but just one, Savvy. How about a cookie, Kringle? Go away! I don't get it. What's an important-looking guy like you doing in a two-bit amusement palace like this? What's to get? This paperweight character says he's made some kind of big discovery of a toy-related nature. I make it my business to keep up with all new developments on the toy front, okay? Why aren't you up there attempting the challenge of the Sphinx? My underlings are handling that for me. I see. Scared to try it yourself, huh? Scared? Nicholas St. Kringle is scared of nothing. You 
fell down. And here, let me help you up. Keep your pincers off me, you drooling little cretin. If you had the teaspoon of brains necessary to do your job, I wouldn't be down here. Okay, what do we got here? Inventory list, profits, losses, naughty, nice. Hmm, employee addresses. Looks like Kringle's employees all live in that elf ghetto. You mean Little Arctic Circle? Here come a couple of hearty specimens. Gentlemen of the boulevards, no doubt. Did he just call us what I think he did? Honest mistake. Play along, Maximus. Give it a whirl, my friends. The challenge of the Sphinx is open to all, regardless of age, prowess, or physical deformity. Who's the codger with the ugly kids? Is he bothering you? You want we should pants him? That's Nicholas St. Kringle, the well-known toy tycoon. He's offered me a fortune to direct him to the tomb of Samun Mak, but his money is of no interest to me. Who wants toy money? Talent! That is what I am searching for. That can of nuts looks oddly out of place up there. That is no ordinary can of nuts. It's a can of nuts from the Devil's Toy Box. What makes it so out of the ordinary? Far be it from me to divulge the secrets of the Devil's Toy Box, but it's just possible that this can does not actually contain nuts. That can of nuts looks oddly out of place up there. That is no ordinary can of nuts. It's a can of nuts from the Devil's Toy Box. What makes it so out of the ordinary? Far be it from me to divulge the secrets of the Devil's Toy Box, but it's just possible that this can does not actually contain nuts. Spill the secret, buddy. How do we make it through this challenge of the Sphinx? I can talk you through the sequence of steps, but you must pass through the mouth of the Sphinx by your own power. To begin, simply step on to the beseeching mat. Beseeching mat? Her tongue. Remind me, what do we win if we beat this game? An all-expenses-paid trip to sunny Egypt. Egypt? Now, is that with the alligators or the crocodiles? Your ignorance of giant carnivorous reptiles is embarrassing me, Maximus. In other words, you don't have a clue how this thing works. Of course I know how it works. I built it. But despite all my arcane knowledge, only one granted the gift has the power to pass through. Why go to all the trouble of rigging up a challenge of the Sphinx? If you're the big expert, why don't you just go through the mouth yourself? Knowledge alone is not sufficient to overcome the Sphinx's defenses, alas. The Seeker must be special. Thanks, your impresario ship. Give the challenge of the Sphinx a try, boys. What have you got to lose? You think they're really flesh-eating ants, Samoth? Only one way to find out. You first. Fine. I like the birdie. I'm not going in that way. Not even for a free trip to Egypt. Beat it, mister. Yeah, quit blocking the view. Lovable little sprites, aren't they? I want to hug them till their wee rib cages buckle. Ooh! What in God's name are you doing with that can of nuts? Well, that was a disconcerting twist on an old joke. The power came from me, Samoth. My body's all tingly. I've never felt anything like it. You may notice a lot of bodily changes over the next few years, little buddy. It's all part I of... I do it again! Hey! Now, where 
where did they run off to? Funny papers. Yeah, but they're all in hieroglyphics. Where are we going, Samoth? Little Arctic Circle. Filthy elves! You pollute the sacred relics of the mole people! Lay off! Go on, burrow back where you came from! Yeah! Go chew on an earthworm, you friggin' undergrounder! Pa, I curse you! Ooh, I'm quaking in me little elven booties! Why can't we all get along, Samoth? Because most of us are a little buddy. Extra! Immigrant population tops one million. Maya urges calm. Jabbering heathens can make decent Americans. Buy a paper, mister? Got change for a dime? What do I look like, Rockefeller? Hey, Slushy! <laughs> Get the dog in the suit! Nice hat, mister! What graveyard you dig it up at? <laughs> I'm mildly disturbed to see you torturing this elf. Yeah, elf torturing should be left to us professionals. Ah, uh, Icebox don't mind. He likes it, don't you, Icebox? <laughs> Icebox is very cooperative. It don't hurt that he's full up on jolly juice. What's the matter? You get off at the wrong stop or something? Swells like you generally steer clear of Little Arctic Circle. We're here to gape with the depressing squalor of your miserable ghetto and congratulate ourselves on our comparative good breeding. Oh, knock yourselves out. Who's the dame you were fighting with when we walked in? Crazy old bat. Some cock and bull story about how the moles is the eternal guardians of the tomb of some joik. Sammy Mac. Yeah, and get this. Our can of nuts is really some kind of mumbo jumbo voodoo drum in her creepy religion. And when I don't hand it over to her, she zaps me with the full on gypsy coist routine. Tough break. Ah, banana oil. That stuff might kill him in Moldavia or wherever, but it don't play in the US of A. So, the curse doesn't worry you at all? Nah, us elves don't believe in that magical junk. We represent Toymaker's Local 614. Stand up and be counted! No contract, no work! Pipe down! We don't need that kind of trouble. We got a cushy setup here. Five hours off every other month. Oh, and we just last week talked the boss into taking the steel tip off the whip. Don't louse it up for us. What in God's name are you doing with that can of nuts? Boykin, what does it look like? Special job for Mr. K himself. We's in the toy and novelty racket, see? We swiped, uh, that is, we managed to acquire this nifty little gizmo here. Sports a couple of interesting features. We cracked a code and Boss Kringle makes a fortune selling it over the holidays. Which means big bonuses for the likes of us. Give it up. You'll never manage to reverse engineer that can of nuts. It only works in the presence of Max's ineffable aura. Right. I hate to say it, but you guys' auras are just plain effable. Ah, uh, Guan, you chumps got no more claim on this can than we do. Only we got it, and we're keeping it, see? We'll see about that, you bonsai bandits. No, Maximus, I think we should go. Huh? They're only going to kill themselves trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, we've got the toy idea that's going to set the industry on its ear. See you in the funny papers, suckers. Wait a minute! The boss will pay big if we bring him a great new concept. And it's true, we ain't getting nowhere with this can of nuts. Tell you what, Polly, we might be willing to wake out a tray. Give us your toy idea. If it's really a winner like you say, we'll let you have the can. No fuss. It's a coiled up spring you push downstairs. Hey, I like pushing things downstairs. Nah, dumb idea. It's an inflatable dartboard. Uh -uh. Tried that last year. It was a bust. It's a board game. A top hat, an iron, and a little dog go around building hotels, and you're all trying to make each other go bankrupt. Interesting idea, but I don't think it'll fly. The kids ain't into capitalism nowadays. 
my first sausage stuffer. A fun way to dispose of leftover lunch meat, household vermin, and scabs. Ah, oh, please, you're making me heave here. My Little Pony Keg. With braidable hoses. Hmm, kids love beer. Yeah, but Mr. K don't. Point and click adventure games. You gotta be kidding. As a matter of fact... You got nothing. We got something all right, but we're holding out on you. Gotta clear it with the boss first. You do that. Come back when you're ready to talk toys. And if your idea's as hot as you say, we'll kick the can over to you. Kick the can. <laughs> Good one, slushy. Shut up. Those round-headed rats. They can't do this to me. I, I mean him. Ah, that can of nuts belongs to Maximus by right of psychic possession. I know. But unless our great-grandpas can dig up a great toy idea, I'm afraid they're out of luck. Genuine snowballs, hand-carved by immigrant elves. Excuse me, buddy. I wonder if you could direct me to... Wait a minute. This isn't a real man. It's one of those snowmen they make to fool visitors to Little Arctic Circle. Hey, Mac, could you tell me the... They did it to me again. Have you got a quarter for the hitching post? The horse got towed, Sameth. Remember? Room for rent. Ha, you'd have to be pretty desperate to take a room around here. Maybe we came at a bad time. He's got one of those newfangled hand pumps. They're all in molish. They all share a certain family resemblance. It's called ugly. What's this? Do not touch. It's visual component of powerful curse I am throwing on Elf out the window. He think he can make on me smart guy wise crack. Ha! We see how smart he feel after he become a vampire. An umpire? No, no. With the uh, sucking of blood and the sleeping in coffins. Oh, a vampire. Excuse me, sir or madam. I can see you're busy muttering to yourself, but... Why you break my concentration on girls? You in cahoots with disgusting elves, no? No. Wait. Mishka Lisa Duja Fizzle Einzefeld. It is you, Nut Boy! Sameth, she just called me Nut Boy. The one with great power from body to squeeze himself down to kind of nut, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's me, Nut Boy! Nut Boy! Oh! Rotten, stinking, disc sick elves! So long I am searching after sacred cannon nuts stolen from tomb of someone muck. To find it in the theater, to see it making with glorious magic nut boy squished down with fat doggy friend. Huh? And then to lose it to grubby little sacrilegious maggot elves. Oh, for the strength of ten moles to crush them to paste. Crushing elves to paste. Sounds fun. And invigorating. You, not a boy and fat doggy friend. You will come to aid of pitiful mall woman. You will take Kanonot back from nasty elves and bring it to mall woman. Sure. The first part, anyway. And perhaps there is something mall woman can do for you. You said something about the tomb of Samun Mac. Ah, oh, how I miss it. The happy pitter-patter of little scarabs. The smiling faces of the sarcophagi. Guarding the tomb has been our family business for many generations. Why did you leave the old country? Oh, tomb guarding business, not what it used to be. 
Nowadays, no decent Tomb Raiders to impale. So, family sent me here. I make it big in America, I send for them. We're in need of a hearty chuckle. Can you read us something from your hieroglyphic funny pages? Let me see. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Mole mates creating much merriment up and down the Nile. In a first pan, husband Mole say to wife, You very angry with me, no? You can see it's true because wife Mole have scorpions crawling from the eyes. In second pan, husband say, It's because you caught me. Oh, how you say it as oh, oh, making the monkey dance with the beautiful temple mole maiden who have the sensuous quivering nostrils. And in the third panel, husband is falling over backwards from great astonishment when the wife saying to him, No, it's because you cut the cucumber lengthwise. <laughs> Oh, you get it? Because oh, who cuts a cucumber lengthwise? <laughs> it's crazy, no? I mean, can you imagine what kind of crazy nut would... Americans have no sense of humor. I'm sure the famous mole humor will come through to us if you read another strip. Okie dokie. Mm, oh, everybody loves Fred Jackal. Fred Jackal is always up to amusing hijinks. Oh, 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 here, Fred Jackal hiding under the bed. His master said to him, Come out, Fred Jackal. I am not angry for you for making in center of living room carpet a steaming pile of dung with many flies buzzing around from the stink. And now, in little bubble of thought, Fred Jackal is saying, He does not know. I cut the cucumber lengthwise. A uh, cucumber cut lengthwise is funny. Is very funny. Never will I understand this country. So she says to him, I can't believe you cut the cucumber lengthwise. Uh, timing is off. This vampire, er, vampire curse, how does it work? Is it instantaneous? No, my magic only sets process in motion. Cursed elf think himself safe now, but wait till he run into a vampire. Ha! Nothing can save him then! I guess you curse a lot of guys. Eh, not so many. I cursed an interloper back at the tomb once, but that was 50 years ago. We can't get through this gate till we read the inscription. It wouldn't be so hard, only they went and wrote it in some crazy picture language. Remind me what the symbols are, and I will tell you how the inscription reads. Well, as I recall, there was a foot, a snake, then two squiggles, and a bird. A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird. How would you say that in ancient Egyptian? Foot, snake, squiggle, squiggle, bird. Works for me. Gee, hieroglyphics are easy. I didn't realize this was going to be one of those educational movies. Keep watching. Can you tell us how to say those hieroglyphics again? A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird? A foot, a snake, two squiggles, and a bird. How would you say that in ancient Egyptian? Foot, snake, squiggle, squiggle, bird. Works for me. Gee, hieroglyphics are easy. Keep on cursing. Okie dokie. Want to skip ahead to the good part? Quick, Samoth! Read the inscription! Um... Don't you remember your hieroglyphics? Foot, snake, squiggle, squiggle, bird. You remembered! That's the way it is with foreign languages, little buddy. It's easy to get out of practice, but once you... Yipe! The daughter and bullets and foiled again! They're getting away! Well, little buddy, here we are, fresh from a successful tomb raiding expedition in Lower Middle Egypt, back on board the Disorient Express bound for New York City. Remind me, Samoth, how did 
we managed to undo that security spell and swipe the devil's toy box from the family of guardian moles. Beats the hell out of me. Who can remember? The important thing is, the toy box is safe and sound right here in our... Holy Hercule Paul Row in a blood-soaked bathtub with a full set of dental records and a mud-caked work boot with two missing treads. We've been robbed. It must have happened while we were stacking up on ketchup packets in the snack car. Which means the culprit is on this train. Somebody stole the devil's toy box from the steamer trunk. Ooh, Sameth, ooh. That's what we've got to find out. No devil's toy box in there. No toy box under there. like Kringle. What do you want? I'm busy in here. Open up. This is the police. The train police? No, the untrained police. Go away. Who is it now? Can I interest you in a subscription to Thievery for Seniors? Go away. Now. We're collecting for the Save the Reindeer Fund. Have you got any old clothing, weaponry, or toy boxes? Go away! I understand the cookies, but why did you bring along those funny papers we picked up back in the city? You never know when funny papers are going to come in handy, little buddy. Kringle likes cookies. The toy box is stashed behind all this luggage. Possibly. Let's start unloading. Nope, not there. No toy box in there. Just some creepy dead guy. Too much from New York, yeah? Kringle wants to see you. What can I do? I can't leave now. None of us can go nowhere till our secret project is complete. What are you elves doing on this train? We go where Kringle goes. We're his retinue, like. Only he don't know nothing about our secret project. How many elves you got in there? At last count, 153.5. Point five? Gary, the third level paladin, is only half elf. I'd like to inspect your trunks. I bet you would, creep. That didn't come out right. Yeah? I'm obviously supposed to ask you about this secret project. I ain't authorized to talk about it. You'll have to talk to the project manager. Hey, Slushy! What's up, dog? Kringle wants to see you. Ah, oh, jeez, he does. Cover for me, fellas. I can't leave this compartment till the secret project's finished. Kringle wants to see you. Ah, oh, jeez, he does. Cover for me, fellas. I can't leave this compartment till the secret project's finished. Um, you okay, Slushy? You're looking kind of pale, dude. Yeah, so they tell me. I guess I got bit by something or other. No pain, though. Matter of fact, I never felt better. Seriously, I hate to break it to you, but I think you're a vampire. Ah, Guan, you don't buy that hooey any more than I do. I could go for a nice blood sausage, though. Slushy the Vampire Elf. Soon to be a beloved holiday special. Quit kidding around. What's this secret project everybody's talking about? 
It's a new toy. Oh, boy, what a toy. This baby will have old man Kringle toying and backflips once we spring it on him. Uh, just putting the finishing touches on it now. Can you give us a sneak peek? Uh-uh. We ain't letting the cat out of the bag. Not yet. Gotta get it kid-tested first to make absolutely certain we got a winner. Boys aren't just for kids anymore. I predict that by the 21st century, grown men will keep toys in their office cubicles. Yeah, well, this is a 20th century toy, and it requires a 20th century kid to test it. Kid test it, eh? My little buddy has the brain of a child. I keep it in my bedroom closet. Nix, nix! We gotta test this toy with a real kid. On a different subject. Stay spooky. Yeah? What I meant to say was, I'm looking to lay my hands on a chest. Well, you ain't laying no hands on mine, weirdo. <sighs> I never knew you had this thing for elves. You think you know someone. Nice caboose. Maybe the toy box is stashed behind all this luggage. Possibly. Let's start unloading. Nope, not there. Hey, baby Amelia Earhart. I... She's napping. Solid little thing. No devil's toy box in there. <sighs> so you're the type that would barge in on a girl and interrupt her nap time, eh? Can't say I'm surprised. What can I do for your fellows? You nap to right of the Valkyries? Always have. Puts me out like a light. Shows you how different people are. I always fall asleep to the tears of a clown. Poor old Chuckles. I think his shackles are too tight. Say, baby Amelia Earhart. Uh-huh. Flight of the Valkyries. That's an unusual kind of lullaby. I'm an unusual kind of kid. Somebody went and stole our toy box. You mean the toy box you stole from the tomb of Salmon Mock? Where's the decency? Well, search me, boys. I'm clean. Got your own compartment now, eh? Going legit? I can afford to, thanks to our old friend Salmon Mock. Gold-plated scarabs are fetching a nice price on the commodities market these days. We've got a big surprise for you, baby Amelia Earhart. You have been chosen to participate in a market research project. Uh-huh. What's the catch? No catch. Just go next door with that nice vampire elf. Where he'll give you a brand new toy to play with. Not interested. Far too busy. What do I look like to you fellows? A child? Be a good girl. Woman. Good woman. Should we go back to the earlier reel or skip ahead to the next one? Well, little buddy, here we are, bound for adventure on the Disorient Express. Egypt, land of ancient tombs and odd-looking humanoid figures with animal heads. I'm scared, Samoth. What if we don't fit in? We've got to. Mr. Paperweight has charged us with an important mission, and we can't let him down. I hope it involves asps. I love asps. You love the word asps. Tickets, please. Please get out your tickets. Now remember, don't breathe a word about our mission. We can't let a soul know we're headed to the tomb of Salmon Muck to bring back the devil's toy box. Cascading Cupid dolls and the four-color funny pages smeared with spaghetti. Name's Earhart. Baby Amelia Earhart, the famous lost kid. Perhaps you've seen my milk carton? I have, I have. 
I'm a spirited little tyke. Lit off from the nursery one day and never looked back. I'm out for adventure, and I figure you might be needing a cute little sidekick. I've already got a cute little sidekick. Yeah, we don't need to see it, Samet. Not now. Tickets! Produce your tickets! Tickets! I'll take those! I don't think I'll so! Do it. Open up and show your tickets! Everyone, be quiet! And invisible! I hope you have a plan! Trunk. She oh, won't shut up, Sam. I know what to do. I'm great with kids. I know my right. There are laws about locking children hey, in trunks. Hey, let's see who can hold their breath the longest, okay? I One, hear two, in there. three. What's going on? Now listen, boys, be reasonable. You may yes, not who's out here with me? Now, Santa Claus. Oh, 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 I know all about kids. I've made a thorough study. I've got the book. Come on, baby Amelia Earhart. Let's use our quiet voice. Open up and produce your ticket. In Transcendental Logic, we isolate the understanding and select from our cognition merely that part of thought which has its origin in the understanding alone. For without intuition, the whole of our cognition is without objects and is therefore quite flawed. Did I mention there's a tarantula in the chest? It won't hurt you if you stay perfectly still. As a matter of fact, I have no idea how to quiet a kid. I'm coming in. Hope I'm not intruding, gents. Not at all. Join in a game of gin, Rummy. Let me out! Stowing aboard without tickets and transporting contraband kiddies as well? What kind of train you think this is? Out! Equipment malfunction? More like a mental equipment malfunction. Should we try another reel? Open up and show your tickets. Everyone, be quiet. And invisible. I hope you have a plan. Open this trunk. Open it this instant. Your Keep your, your mouth shut. shut. Keep your e mouth shut. Keep your e mouth e shut. E Don't say e a word. E Open up, I say. We gotta hide. <laughs> I'm coming in. I could have swore there was somebody gabbing in here. Huh. Nobody here. Reckon I were wrong. That was a close call. Lucky for us, we played that tour in Gutter Demeron. <laughs> we sure put one over on that sap of a conductor, didn't we, partners? Partners? For the last time, kid, you're not joining our outfit. Nonsense. This is just the beginning. We've got an endless series of marvelous adventures ahead of us. You'll find it's not so easy to impress these Egyptian types with your magic act, little buddy. These jokers ingest sorcery with their mother's milk. Speaking of which, it looks like we finally managed to lose that pesky baby Amelia Earhart. By George, you're right. That was a clever move, winning her at that mirage and telling her it was an oasis. Oh, <laughs> little kids are so trusting. Now, let's get down to the business at hand. We've got to find the Devil's Toy Box before it's scooped up by some disreputable Tomb Raiders. More disreputable than us, you mean? Look for a hidden passageway leading to an endless labyrinth. No doubt we'll encounter a dizzying array of fiendish death traps, but if we keep our wits about Found us... Found it! About time. Anyone for calamari? Stop quaking with girlish timidity, Maximus. It isn't that. It's my psychic aura. It's acting up again, Samoth. Something within that toy box is calling out to me. Samoth! It's a ventriloquist dummy! Don't panic, little buddy. It could be a fake. Well, well, what have we here? Boom, Raiders. Oh, my. We haven't had a good Raiden in nigh under 50 years. Now, just sit tight for a minute. We're afraid you caught us with our trousers down, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, haven't bothered to reset the security system in 
Oh, I don't know how long. Uh, now then. Protection spell looks to be in order. Hmm? to do the trick. Nothing beats a good old-fashioned protection spell. <laughs> now don't touch that toy box if you value your hide. There goes my aura again. I must have that dummy. Was that a... Yes, little buddy. It looks like you got your asp. And it's a big asp, too. Mounting the devil's toy box, yeah? I can help you, but you must help me first. How do European gent like yourself wind up on a two-dimensional surface like this? I am but a poor student of the antiquities. I came to Egypt in order to make sketches of the tomb decorations. Little did I expect I would become a tomb decoration myself. You know how to break the spell of protection over the toy box? Naturally. During my long confinement here, I have had much opportunity to study the mole magic. Then why can't you undo your own curse? Alas, I have the limited mobility up here. You undo my spell, I'll help undo yours. Who? Who did this to you? The moles. They are completely verruked. Especially the old one. At first he played the kindly grandfather, but then without warning he turned on me like the vicious wild beast and cursed me with bad luck. I tried to flee, but the way out was blocked by a nasty mole woman with a cheesy accent. She threw another curse at me. In my confusion, I blundered into a tripwire and poof! Curse number three! And here I am. What's your problem? Bad accent? No, I have been confined on this accursed wall for decades. You must free me, bitte. What do we need to do to get you down from there? You see the bust of Samun Mark? There's a secret clasp underneath it. Release the clasp and I am released from the wall, your grateful servant. How do we get to the bust? That is the good question. Hang tight. I'm good at that. <laughs> this big ugly guy seems to be very taken with the little gold guy. Maybe to an unhealthy degree. It's a cozy niche. This big ugly guy seems to be very taken with the little gold guy, maybe to an unhealthy degree. I'm free! I'm free! Oh, glorious third dimension! Oh, blessed relief! <laughs> I'm free! You're not. So sorry. Got to run. <laughs> Wait. You said you'd help us land the devil's toy box. Do not be silly. What would a couple of bar reliefs want with a toy box? Just Infidels! Vipers! You have removed the sacred bust of Samun Mac. For your sins, you must remain on this wall. Okay, fair enough. Uh, for how long? For eternity! <laughs> I don't get it. Excuse me, I need to use the little pharaoh's room. You'll have to hold it a while. How long? For eternity! <laughs> I still don't get it. 
Look, I shouldn't say anything, but my friend here, he's the one. The one? You know, the one. Like in the prophecies. Prophecies? Didn't you get some prophecies about a great powerful something or other with a magical thing? Uh, uh-uh. When we get home, I'm gonna have a little talk with my agent. I'm sorry to threaten you, but my little buddy here knows every show tune ever written. And unless you take us off this wall, he's going to sing them all for eternity. Give my regards to Broadway. Silence! Okay, for reals, there's got to be some way around this stuck on the wall for eternity, who, huh? Well... Shh. Yeah? Come on. Well, we have to let you off if you can answer the riddle of this fox. Which no one ever has. Let's hear the riddle. <sighs> All right. You who raid the Pharaoh's tomb, much deserving of your doom. If you want to save your hide, tell us what the gods deride. Hmm. What the gods deride? Hmm. Racism against gods? Nuh uh. Monkeys? Not even close. Annoying people? Is that it? Huh? Huh? Did we get it? Huh? Guess again. Chick flicks? Not even close. People who think everything's about them? Meaning me, I suppose. Nuh uh. Guys who leave the seat up? Guess again. Short people? Not even close. People who do unflattering impressions of their friends behind their backs? Like who, for instance? Like who, for instance? Nuh uh. Monsters. Ah! Guess again. Insufferable philologistical affectation? Nuh uh. Those damn whippersnappers with their horseless carriages and crystal sets? Guess again. To cut the cucumber lengthwise? <laughs> Boy, that's a good one. <laughs> Never gets old, does it? We're free! And we've still got the bust of Salmon Mac. Two doorways. Halt! Two doorways! I just said that. The doorway of life and the doorway of death. Choose a right, and you will pass through to the chamber of delight, wherein our greatest treasure resides. Choose a wrong, a wrong, and a mighty scimitar will strike from above and slice you cleanly in half. <laughs> Proceed. If you dare. Shoot, shoot, shoot! Grr. You were supposed to go through the other door. The other door is the one with the scimitar. You won't be so lucky next time. I'm going to recalibrate the mechanism. You'll have to pass this point again on your way out, and then... Watch out, that's all. You're not allowed to look. I guess it's only fair to give him a second chance. Say, buddy. Yes? Hey, buddy. You know anything about an elderly mole man with specs? Sure. That's my pop. He guards the burial chamber. Is that the scimitar there? Over the... Don't look! Don't look! The doors of life and death are supposed to be a surprise! We ran into this mole person back in New York. Kerchief, obsessed with a can of nuts. Natasha! My darling little pudding snout. <laughs> Tell me, what was she up to? Cursing elves, mostly. Ah, still doing what she loves most. Answer me something, Pops. Why is it the moles back in New York speak in this funny dialect, and you talk just the same way we do? I I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm completely thrown by your accent. Can you convince the old guy to take down his protection spell and let us have the Devil's Toy Box? The Devil's Toy Box? The treasure we moles have been guarding for 6,000 years? Yeah. No. 
love to stay and chat, but we got a tomb to raid. Oh. Young Salmon Mock started life as a humble frog catcher, but fate intervened. Salmon Mock discovers the Devil's Toy Box, the moment that changed the course of history. Salmon Mock the Great, at the zenith of his power. Gee, I want to be a god king! There we see the body of Salmon Mock. Born to the tomb by the Mole Guardians. They say it was the costliest burial of all time. Now that's what I love about this country. You guys know how to throw a classy funeral. Hold it right there, buckos! Can't you read hieroglyphics? It's a turn and a leaf. Exactly. Turn and leaf. The two of us want to be alone. We happen to be sharing a super intimate moment. More key, lover boy. Lover boy? It's the dummy! His name is Charlie Hotep. Now, are you gonna keep away or do I have to shit spot on you? What? Your father said something about finding his greatest treasure in here. Yeah, so you found her. But don't start getting any ideas. I've already found my dream boy. I'm truly happy for all of us. We can't just leave. We went through so much to get here. The doorways of life and death, you mean? Right. Dad built that. It's like supposed to discourage shooters. As if I need him always watching over me. God, so embarrassing. So what happens if we decide to just saunter right in? Do you want me to set my ass on you? No, no! Oh, please, God, anything but that! Listen, kid, I know your feelings for Charlie Hotep are very, well... Dysfunctional? But I'm going to have to insist you turn him over to my pal here. Charlie and me are soulmates! Right, as if... Charlie and I have a perfect understanding. Just try and come between us, and I'll put a curse on you that'll curl your toes. Some people would say it isn't very becoming for a young lady to curse. Yeah, right. Cursing is only like a completely major part of mole culture. I suppose your dad does a curse too? Ha! You don't even want to know. He's got, like, the most devastating curse in the whole world. The sexo rejecto hex. Hmm. Can you tell us about it without getting us an M rating? How'd you like it if the very sound of your voice repulsed the opposite sex? <laughs> Can you imagine? What's your curse, little girl? The whole scene hex. But I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> Stay sullen, kid. Shut up! Well, that's a cute little tea party, but don't you think a girl your age should be going on dates with real guys? As if you could handle me. <laughs> that's not what I... Never mind. Is he friendly? Depends. He's not too good with living beings, but uh, he likes dead things. Come on, Charlie. Make a break for it. That's it! You violated my inner sanctum! You. Go get him, Spot. in the whole world. Well, Charlie, you finally got me alone. 
Now's your chance to murmur those three little words. <laughs> We're out of here. Huh? You, you, see how you like Nefertiti's curse. Wait a minute, how does it go? Oh yeah. Maximus! No! No! For the love of God, no! 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 For the love of God, no! 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 For the love of God, no! Say something, little buddy. Moo. Whew, he's all right. Practice makes perfect, kid. I'm sure you'll improve. Oh, I hate you! You ruined my whole life! Say, buddy. Yes? Any other curses we should be aware of? Pop's got a good one. The bad luck whammy. But he never gets riled enough to use it. Your daughter keeps threatening to curse us. Well, she needs the practice. But I'm sure you fellows don't want to experience the Holstein hex. It's utterly devastating. So, I hear you throw a mean curse. Well, a father's got to protect his daughter's virtue, doesn't he? The sexo rejexo hex makes for quite the deterrent. You'd be surprised how few boys come tomcatting around here. Huh. But don't worry. I only use the curse on fellows she has a crush on. And, well, I don't mean to be cruel, but you're hardly her type. Sweet relief! Will you please tell your daughter to stop making indecent proposals to us? My daughter? You? It's flattering, of course, but a clear violation of workplace guidelines on sexual harassment. Stop saying that! You're like the grossest guys I've had the unfortunate displeasure to meet, ever! Indulging in a bit of wishful thinking, eh, fellas? Puppy love. Cute, isn't it? Yeah, but I wish she wouldn't get her lip liner all over my fur. Oh, barf! She doesn't sound infatuated to me! She just can't keep her hands off us. My Nefertiti? What she tried to do to my ears. Woo, I'm still blushing. You are such lawyers! I hate you! I wish you were dead! She doesn't sound infatuated to me. Love to stay in chat, but we got a tomb to raid. You and I are going to make beautiful music together. Now, let's see. Where do my hands go? Ah! I can't hold it inside any longer! I love you, Samoth and Maximus! I want to be your mole! I want to have your puppies! There! I've said it! Never Teddy! I didn't... If I hadn't just heard it with my own ears, I'd have never believed it. But it wasn't... I've got no choice but to blast you fellows with the sexo rejexo hex. Brace yourselves. Until the curse wears off, the very sound of your voice will repulse the opposite sex. Somebody on this train has a... Bye-bye, baby.
you. You're the middle European jerk who got Maximus and me stuck on the wall back in the tomb of Samun Mac. Please, this is ancient history. Let go. Move on. Nah. Hope we're interrupting something. Not at all. I was just leaving. I won't rest till you give me the... You know what? Goodbye, Jurgen. Whatever. Ahem. Hi there. Hey. Just out of curiosity, what was your dad whispering about with that overripe European? His name is Jurgen. I'm not supposed to know what he wants from my dad, but well. Come on. <laughs> Duh. Poor sweet thing. He tried so hard to avoid making eye contact with me. I hope you're not still sore at us for stealing your boyfriend. Huh? Oh, you mean that silly ventriloquist dummy? Hmm. I don't care about him anymore. He was just a childish fancy. I'm... Totally a woman now. You are not! I've got a new boyfriend now. <laughs> new boyfriend? That wouldn't happen to be... You know how my dad is. He mustn't know about our engagement. Engagement? You mean... Oh, he hasn't asked me yet. But I can see it in his eyes. What attracts you to a guy like that anyway? This tragic aura. There's something haunted about him. Like he's laboring under some kind of terrible curse. Twittishness? Seen the devil's toy box lately? What do I care about toy boxes? I've got more important things to think about. Excited about moving to America, eh? You bet! In the New World, a girl can grow up to be anything she wants to be. A seamstress, a nurse, a kindergarten teacher, even a stenographer. Want to throw that cow curse at us again, for old time's sake? I bet you're really good at it now. Nah, I'm not mad at you anymore. <laughs> not since I found true love. <laughs> so don't house it up for me. Hope it works out for you, kid. Mrs. Jurgen. No devil's toy box in there. Hey, remember us? Of course! You're the wise guys who made off with the devil's toy box, the treasure we moles have been guarding for almost 6,000 years. What was that fellow with a fruity accent doing in here? Private business. Let's just say he wants something that only I can give him. Oh, Dad. <laughs> you don't have to be so secretive. You're not mad at us for raiding your tomb? Heck no. Losing that toy box was the best thing that ever happened to us mole people. After 6,000 years, we can finally say goodbye to burial chambers and hello to Broadway. America! I can hardly wait! Do you know where you're going when we reach America? To join my wife Natasha. We sent her ahead to get established. I hear she's managed to score us a sweet boiler room on the west side. A funny thing. That toy chest we swiped from you? Somebody swiped it from us! Well, easy come, easy go. <laughs> <laughs> Can we inspect your trunk? No. So, I hear you throw a mean curse. But don't worry. I only use the curse on fellows she has a crush on. And, well, I don't mean to be cruel, but you're hardly her type. After all we've been through together in real two, I feel I can speak freely. Yes? I'm sorry to report that your daughter is harboring a massive crush. On whom? little buddy's ventriloquist dummy. Oh dear, that doesn't sound healthy. 
Oh well, she'll either outgrow it or become a lonely, twisted old spinster with a toy fixation. Either way, I don't have to worry. After all we've been through together in real too, I feel I can speak freely. Yes? I'm sorry to report that your daughter is harboring a massive crush. On whom? On that Jorgen guy. Ah! Tell me another! After all we've been through together in real too, I feel I can speak freely. Yes? I'm sorry to report that your daughter is harboring a massive crush. On whom? On us. Still? Well then I'm sorry guys, but I'm gonna have to hit you again with the old sexo rejexo X. Until the curse wears off, the very sound of your voice will repulse the opposite sex. Keep riding the rails, Mr. Molman. Okay. We suspect you're hiding stolen goods in here. What goods? A fortune and jewels. You're not allowed to inspect the trunk without just cause. We suspect you're hiding stolen goods in here. What goods? Kidnapped children. You're not allowed to inspect the trunk without just cause. We suspect you're hiding stolen goods in here. What goods? The Devil's Toy Box. Therefore, we must invoke our spurious authority and look inside. I've read my railway regulations manual. You're not allowed to inspect the trunk without just cause. Yes? Who are you really, and what are you doing on this train? I told you, I am but a humble student of the antiquities. Oh yeah? This train isn't an antiquity. It will be someday. You and the Mole Man next door seem to have some sort of mysterious connection. <laughs> if it were up to me, I would have no connection with these Mole Men and their pesky curses. But I am not completely free yet. Hiding a toy box in your compartment, are you? About yay big, 6,000 years old? No. The mole girl from next door thinks you're all that. She is totally hot for you. Please, as if I am not already cursed enough. Somebody was asking for you in another car. Yeah, who? Mr. Kringle, next car over. Don't know him. Somebody was asking for you in another car. Yeah, who? Baby Amelia Earhart in the last car. Never heard of her. Somebody was asking for you in another car. Yeah, who? One of the elves in the last car. Don't know him. We're watching you, Jurgen. <laughs> yeah, like I care. Maybe the toy box is stashed behind all this luggage. Possibly. Let's start unloading. Nope, not there. Look, it's our old pal Spot. Hi, Spot. How's the boy? Whoa, cranky. Let me talk to Slushy. What's up, dog? Wait right there. I've got the perfect kid for you. Yeah? That's fantastic, pal. Send him over. Okay, boys, cut to the punchline. It's playtime.
Really like it then? Liked it? I adored it! Haven't had that much fun in ages! Made me feel like a 16-month-old again! Hot dog, that's just what we was hoping to hear! Thanks, kid! Revelatory! Positively revelatory! I dare say that toy has changed the course of my entire life! It's a model biplane. Yeah? Now that your secret's out, you won't mind if we snoop through your steamer trunks? Ah, come on! We got nothing to hide! A hundred and fifty-three point five steamer trunks, but no chest. A lot of chest nuts, though! Stay sprightly. Should we go back to the earlier reel or skip ahead to the next one? We've got... Toy stores close for the day, gentlemen. To use, anyhow. We've got a toy idea that'll knock your stripy socks off. Lay it on us. If it's as good as you say, we'll happily hand this cannon that's over to you. It's a toy biplane. He's on to something there. Air travel's the latest thing. It can't miss. Snowcone, get the boys working on a prototype. Post haste. I'll spring it on the boss when he's good and jollied up on milk and cookies. <laughs> it's a cinch he'll give us the old ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Raises all around. And you don't mind giving us that can? Oh, that. I love to, Mac, but uh, me friend here sort of attached to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's part of him. What do you say we remove some parts from some elves? After you. You ow, 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 stop, ow! What's that stuff that comes out of them when they splatter? Well, sure, people use it to thicken eggnog. Extra! Voice Transatlantic Railway now open for business. All aboard this Saturday. Buy a paper, mister? Who can penetrate the gate of the Sphinx? Hey, didn't he steal this shtick from Miss Lizzie and her boisterous barmaids? I don't think so. This act doesn't have a chimp. Go away! Ready to give the challenge of the Sphinx a try, my friend? Sphinx has awakened. You are indeed a seeker of substance. We like to say he's pleasantly plump. Place your offering in the divine nostrils. Inventory's looking kind of barren, Samet. It'll fill up. This is only the start of our adventure. May the divine odor of chocolate chips prove pleasing to thy nasal cavities. Very good. You have passed the first threshold. Now, recite the words of the inscription. Foot, snake, squeakle, squeakle, bird. Well done, my friends. Now, there's only one barrier between yourselves and ultimate victory. You chattering little ice monkey! If those two chuckleheads beat us to the prize! Don't worry about it, boss. Oh, so they got lucky on the password. Look, I'm gonna get them through that gate.
You've done it! You have beaten the challenge of the Sphinx! You are the gifted one I have been searching for. I'm the gifted one? I'm his manager. No matter. I've got tickets for both of you. Tomorrow morning, you set off for sunny Egypt aboard the Disorient Express. Gee, thanks. I may weep with gratitude, but that's not all. An even more fabulous prize awaits you, and another challenge should you choose to accept it. I charge you with the task of delving into the actual tomb of Samun Mak and recovering the legendary Devil's Toy Box. Is that all? Say no more. We're on the case. Time to roll out Plan B. Score one for the great-grandparents. Yeah, but I bet you Kringle and the elves beat them to the chest. You're nuts. Don't listen to him, fellas. Somebody on... I've got something for you, Jurgen. At last! Give me the... letter? I bared my soul in it. <laughs> oh, I am so touched to the core of my being. Let me put it among my keepsakes. something yes help I'm a prisoner in here got someone in the trunk eh I'm afraid railway regulation number 268 leaves us no choice but to inspect it you're not the train conductors we're the untrained conductors. Oh, well, go ahead then. Clothes, blankets, pots and pans, magical bric-a-brac, no toy chest in here. I guess you're cleared. Why would we steal the toy chest back? It was hard enough to get rid of it. Think this is significant? It's selectable, isn't it? That's just one of our magic spells. Pay it no mind. Only mole people can do mole magic. And that particular spell is only useful to those who are under the dread vampire curse. I I'm taking off for a while. I'll see ya. Where do you think you're going, little girl? Oh, I thought I'd smoke some drugs and get pregnant. That's all. Don't be smart with me, Nefertiti. We're not in America yet. Oh, Dad! Now, you be careful out there, you hear? Don't talk to anybody. What? Yes? Oh, it's just you. Yes. Just me. All alone. <laughs> you got me where you want me. <laughs> There's only one thing I want. You know what that is? Uh, um... Poor little dear. She's uh, completely uh, clung tied. Uh, <clears throat> only we could put the words in well, her mouth. Uh, <laughs> uh, um... <coughs> c c um... <laughs> um... Uh... It's, uh, getting a little crowded out here. I shall return. <sighs> yes? Listen, we know what it is you're looking for and where you can find it. 
and I should believe you. Why? Because we've got honest faces. Please. Somebody was asking for you in another car. Yeah? Who? One of the elves in the last car. Don't know him. We ought to introduce Slushy to our pal Jurgen. I think he'd find him irresistible. We're watching you, Jurgen. <laughs> yeah, like I care. Hi there. Uh, I'm taking off for a while. Uh, see ya. Where do you think you're going, little girl? Come off it, Dad. We're in the modern world now. Girls can go wherever they want. Well, okay. But make it a quick stroll and don't talk to anybody. Right. Like I'm totally gonna throw myself at some stranger. Yes. You're back, like the plague. Oh, Jurgen. <laughs> How poetic you are! Yeah, yeah. Are you here to give me what I want? Uh, um... Poor little dear. She's uh, completely tongue-tied. Uh, uh, Only we could put the words in well, her mouth. Uh, I'm suddenly feeling less uh, repellent, um, Samoth. Me too, honey. The curse must have worn off. Let's score some chicks! Uh, 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 um... The Vampire Reverse Curse? Tell me, where can I find it? Uh, um... <laughs> the Sarcophagus! In the next car! Oh, I am saved from the fate worse than death! I am so happy I could kiss you! But I won't. Jurgen? <laughs> Nobody home. Garlic, crosses, and wolf's pain. What do you make of that, little buddy? Jesus pesto? Uh-uh. Me thinks somebody's trying to ward off vampires. <sighs> Don't say me thinks, Samoth. Hmm. Some sort of letter. My dearest Jorgen, what is this itch that spreads across my dewy young mole skin whenever you are near? I don't know if I should read this. Read it! Read it! <laughs> Whenever you are near, it is love, and only your long, pale fingers can scratch it. <laughs> Do you itch for me as well? No need to answer. I can see the agony in your eyes when we're together. Oh, yeah, bet! But I must beg you to keep our love a secret for now. My ogre of a father would have a fit. He doesn't realize I'm no longer his little girl. And my grandfather has this crazy irrational hatred for people from Stuttgart. Interesting. Be patient, my prince. There's a place for us. A place where moles and Germans can lock lips for eternity. I think I know what that place is called. Your love kitten, Nefertiti. I wonder why Grandpa Mole hates people from Stuttgart. Everyone hates people from Stuttgart. Ah. Yeah, but is it a romance or horror? There's a difference? Hey, remember us? Of course! 
keep riding the rails, Mr. Molman. Okay. As a responsible adult... <laughs> as a responsible adult, I feel it's my duty to give you this. Hey! Huh? My dearest Jurgen, dewy young moleskin, long pale fingers, Nefertiti! Dad! We're in love! You are not! I hope I am not interrupting any soon. Debaucher, cradle robber, despoiler of innocence! Hmm, perhaps this is a bad time. I curse you! No! Whatever. You'll survive. Yeah? Survive this! The whole scene hex. I don't like this any better than you do, little buddy. Nature's miracle. Keep working at it. Pringle likes milk. Over, Kringle. That toy box is ours. We stole it fair and square. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Now scram before I call the conductor and have you confined to the lunatic car. There's a lunatic car? Who is it now? Room service. For the love of Blitzen, it's about damn time. Yeah, hold on a minute. Cookies! And milk! And they threw in a free can of nuts to make up for the inconvenience. You're bad for me, you naughty little snacks. <laughs> but you go down so good. He's out cold. It's empty. What? You mean I gave up my precious milk for nothing? Wait a minute. There's a note. The Brotherhood of Yang Sagat. Who could have written this? Who indeed? Oh, God. Oh, no. My word. I've been double-crossed! Out! Damn you, out! What now? Talk to Slushy. What's up, dog? Pringle wants to see you. Ah, oh, great, because I want to see him. <laughs> Can't wait to see the look on his face when I tell him all about our new toy biplane. Ah, don't bite me, don't bite me. Well, what did he think? Uh, who? Pringle, about the toy. Oh, right. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I, I never made it to his compartment. I got caught up in some, uh, some poisoner business along the way. Yeah. 
Uh, excuse me. Yes. Look on the bright side. Surely the mole girl will leave you alone. Now you're a vampire. You clearly know nothing about the teenage girls. She thinks I am even more tragically sexy than before. Oh. Tough break. Um, you're looking a little peaked. I know! I have become a vampire! A horrible creature of the night, feared and loathed by all! Ah, cheer up, Jurgen. You were loathed by all before you became a vampire! If you're still looking for the vampire reverse curse, you won't find it here. No, it's too late for that. I was just thinking how this sarcophagus would make a Vutabar bed if I could find another place to stash the moldering corpse. Stay out of the sun. Oh, your concern is so touching. Shall we? Let's shout. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, garlic, crosses. My own protective talismans are keeping me away. Oh, the bitter irony of it all. Curses. Curses indeed. Stop. Get your filthy hands off that toy box. It's not for the likes of you. It's empty. What? The trunk is empty. No. I have failed you, Yogg-Sagoth. But you will be avenged. Even for a vampire, he's a weirdo. Well, that's the lot of them, little buddy. We've cleared every name on the list. Except one. Huh? I must admit you had me fooled, Samoth. Always so concerned about the missing toy box and the way you were always slipping off for a smoke break. I never slipped off Grand for a... Grand Central Station. Now arriving at Grand Central Station, New York, New York. What's that? Baby, baby Amelia, Amelia Earhart? Earhart? Yes, Baby Amelia Earhart. Little Baby Amelia Earhart, not worth bothering with, not good enough to play with the big boys. Oh no, she's just a woman. Well, it appears this insignificant female has beat quite a few of the big boys at their own game, and now she's going home with all the toys, while the others are left scratching their heads, wondering what hit them. Grand Central Station! Any last words before we part? Watch your step. Kind of anticlimactic for a boss fight. I thought it was exciting. Let's take this toy box and skedaddle, little pal. We've got an appointment with Monsieur Paperweight. Gee, the olden days are fun. How come you never take me on transoceanic train trips, Sam? The Zeppelin industry has rendered that mode of transportation obsolete, little buddy. There must be a way to undo that protection spell so we can get our hands on the Devil's Toy Box. Come on, cutie! He come to Grandpa! Why, you sly old rascal! Whoa, stay back, fellas. I'm talking to her. Hello, boys. Bouncing boomerangs at a barbecue. She's back! Never underestimate an independent woman! 
Ain't she a caution? Just like my granddaughter used to be not so long ago. Eh. Yes. Come on. Come to Grandpa. Grandpa's got toys. I like toys. You keep your distance. No Tomb Raiders allowed in the burial chamber. The Graveyard of the Moles. Hey, Gramps, who's in the sarcophagus? Well, see if you can guess. You're in the tomb of Sam and Mac. Wait, wait, don't help us! Look, Samoth! Hieroglyphic blocks! The time-honored method of introducing children to the joy of cultic incantations. Tourist brochures, eh? Planning a little vacation? Yep, Benny and the kid think I could do a little airing out. Been in this tomb so long, I'm starting to grow mold. <laughs> Problem is, there's just so many darn places to visit. Say, where are you boys from? We're citizens of the world. Oh, I wouldn't go there. Too big. Nice blocks. Hieroglyphic blocks. Used them to teach my little Nefertiti how to spell way back in the day. Come on, princess. Gramps has some blocks for you to play with. Can I have a... You're a little old to be playing with blocks, ain't you? Say, Gramps, you know that spell of protection you put on the devil's toy box? We just cracked it. Yep, we nabbed the treasure and we're on our way. Just stopped in to say goodbye. Nice try, you fellas. That security spell is pretty near foolproof, I reckon. I cast it many times, and it ain't failed me yet. Picked a vacation spot yet? No, darn it, I just can't decide. Where'd you boys say you were from again? Beyond time and space. Eh? Oh, mm, 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 that's nice. Picked a vacation spot yet? No, darn it, I just can't decide. Where'd you boys say you were from again? The U.S. of A. Eh, never heard of it. New country, is it? Picked a vacation spot yet? No, darn it, I just can't decide. Where'd you boys say you were from again? You wouldn't have heard of it. A little town called Stuttgart. Stuttgart? You mean to tell me I've been standing here talking to a couple of dang nab dead blasted Stuttgartarians? What's your language, Gramps? No cursing in the burial chamber. Oh, oh, oh. you ain't experienced cursing till you got a snoot full of my extra spicy bad luck whammy. Call it. Heads or tails? Tails. No heads. Tails. No tails. You lose. Say, Gramps. What can I do for you, gents? I understand you mole people have a talent for throwing curses. Yep. Ah, here we go. Curses. Curses. That's all anybody remembers about us mole people. We're good at dancing, too, but nobody ever wants to hear about that. Mm, forgive the outburst, Sonny. What was it you wanted to know? Your son Benny just put this sexo rejexo hex on us. Oh, did he now? <laughs> you must have caught the eye of young Nefertiti, am I right? Well, I hope you're partial to long distance love affairs, because that's all you're getting. For a while, anyway. I'll bet your darling granddaughter knows how to curse up a storm. <laughs> well, let's just say her Holstein hex might put you fellas in a bad mood. <laughs> Once she's got it down pat, that is. But enough about curses. There's something else you want to know? How about you let us come in, and we'll toss the baby over to you? No, sir. Baby's got to come to Grandpa all on her own, son. And then Grandpa will tell her little stories and pinch her little fat cheeks. <laughs> Lord help us. Stay vague. Eh? 
Want to go on a ride? Hey, Gramps, who's in the sarcophagus? Well, let's see if you can guess. You're in the tomb of Sam and Mac. Wait, wait, don't help us! Say hi to Grandpa! Well, well, look who dropped in. Ain't you a lively little wiggler? I'm afraid I must be going. Wait, Grandpa's got a story for you. Once upon a time, in a far-off kingdom, there was a family of adorable bunny rabbits. Now, these bunny rabbits lived in a hole at the bottom of a fir tree. Now, that seemed like a contradiction, doesn't it? A tree with fur on it. But it was a funny forest, and they was funny little bunnies. Little scamp got away. Come on back out, baby. Grandpa's got lots more stories for you. Hey! Don't throw things to the doorway of death. Do you want to dull the blades? Doorways. The doorway of life, passageway to paradise. The doorway of death, a swinging blade to slice you cleanly in half. But which is which? <laughs> which is which? Wait, isn't he gonna tell us? We're the meat-based version of us again. Now, to scramble this security spell. Great. They're welded in place. It's a perfectly fine protection spell, but I think we can improve it. Now, that's an inscription. What's all the commotion? Did I cast that protection spell, or didn't I? Hmm, can't remember. Well, no harm in giving it another shot. in sight. Stone Guardian guys, otherwise occupied. Unbreakable spell of protection, broken. Nothing standing between us and that toy box but air. Come on, little buddy, let's go get it. That's it? No, no final embrace? No slow fade? No interminable credit sequence with cheesy pop cover of the title tune? Oh, it ain't over yet, little buddy. We've still got the most important reel to go, remember? I think the story's about to come to a head. And uh, speaking of coming to a head, I need to duck out for a minute. Don't you start the last reel without me.
And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, fresh from the triumphant tour of Lower Middle Egypt, the scourge of the mole people, treasure finders extraordinaire. Please welcome Samoth and Maximus. Hi, folks. We didn't mean to interrupt the show. Here's that toy box you wanted. Um, we'll be on our way. Just as soon as you cough up our prize. Of course, of course. But before I hand out the big reward, perhaps I can coax our intrepid adventurers into telling us a bit about their grand adventure? Not much to it, really. We came, we saw, we conquered. Hand over the loot! <laughs> so modest. No, I'm afraid my audience wants all the gory details. Don't you, friends? So tell me, Samoth and Maximus. To begin with, how was it you were able to pass through the mouth of the Sphinx? After we got the can of nuts back from the elves, my little buddy and I squished into it and rode the Sphinx's tongue through the gate. An astounding story, all the more convincing for being implausible. Now do we get our... However... Once inside the tomb of Samun Mak, you were faced with many more dangers. Magic spells, deadly traps, bloodthirsty mole men. However, did you manage to beat the odds and secure the devil's toy box? Cleverly noting that Grandpa Mole took his cues from a hieroglyphic inscription, we turned ourselves into bas-relief tune carvings, shuffled over to the marquee where the inscription was located, and added additional glyphs which had the effect of reversing the spell. And also, we got eaten and spit up by an asp. What a strange and compelling, if convoluted, story. Audience, give them a hand for what they've been through. And the adventure does not end there. I'm told that you two were victims of a brazen daytime heist on the train ride back from Egypt. Can you tell the audience how you managed to thwart the thief and recover the treasure? The robbery was committed by none other than that irrepressible scamp, baby Amelia Earhart. She almost got away with it, but we were a little too tough for her. A resourceful duo, don't you agree? That's nice. Now, how about that reward? Fear not, my talented little logomorph. You will receive your reward, right? No! My dear Maximus, you have been chosen to play the starring role in the greatest spectacle of the age, the summoning of Yog Sagoth. The hell I have! We're Samoth! Yog Sagoth, most terrible of the ancient ones, banished from the Southie Plain for six long millennia. But you, with your extraordinary psychic gift, you will intone the words to bring him from the realm of darkness into the light. The hell I will! Yes, the hell you will. If you refuse to play your role, a certain friend of yours will meet an unfortunate demise. Sameth! <clears throat> An unfortunate demise in a vat of flesh-eating ants. Yikes. But are you sure this role is me? You are the one with the gift. Which reminds me. Can't have you pulling any funny business. All right, then. Let's get it over with. Cue up the entrance music. Yog Sagoth, primal prince of chaotic night. Descend to us through the writhing wastes of outer darkness. We summon thee with the deathless words from the Book of Abominations. Now you say, Umke Onine, the other way's Einfe. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. What's my motivation supposed to be? Abject fear. Right. Nice atmospheric touch.
This is where my skee ball expertise pays off. Charlie, am I glad to see you? Now you say, um, ke on in a, the other way's I'm fay. I see him! Uh, there he is, in the chest! Yug Sagoth? Tentacles, glowing red eyes. Yep, gotta be him. Shorter than I expected him to be. Let me see. Where? Where? Look close. Onine, the other way's Einfei. Uh-oh. Well, that was impressively grotesque. We certainly gave the audience their money's worth, wouldn't you say, folks? What about this thing? Oh, that's right. Can't have the devil's toy box falling into any other villainous hands. Where should we stash it? Fellas, fellas. I appreciate your thinking of us, but we don't do that old world hocus pocus anymore. I got a nice dry cleaning business, and Nefertiti's going to school for. Dad! I told you! It isn't Nefertiti anymore! It's Bubbles. Sorry we can't help you, but. You see how it is. Yeah, we see how it is. Come on, Maximus. Boy, America sure has changed these guys. I hardly recognize them. Look, Samoth, they even sliced their cucumbers lengthwise. What? It is true. Papa, have we fallen so far? We have forgotten our heritage. We have forgotten we are moles. Okay. We'll take the toy chest back. Great. Keep us posted if... But you've got to help us guard it. You will live here in this boiler room with us. There's plenty of space. How about we compromise? Our kids will open an office in the building and help you keep an eye on the chest. We've got kids? Shut up, Maximus. It's a deal. Now let's see. We'd better cast that spell of protection to keep it safe. Let me do it, Dad. Stand over there so you don't get zapped by the magic. <laughs> Wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Let's see. How does it go again? The Holstein Hex! You're not turning me into no cow! Maximus! No! You know, there's a great basement apartment opening up on 83rd Street. Two bedrooms, built-in washer-dryer. Two skeletons, four moldering reels of film, and one buried toy box. A century-old story, now forgotten in the sub-basement of history. But the past has a disconcerting tendency to claw through the freshly laid sod of the present and wrap its cadaverous fingers around the entrails of the future. Well, that took longer than expected. The restroom in the train station was closed, so I had to... Hey! You watched the ending without me, didn't you, you malevolent little fiend? So tell me, what was the big final act twist? Samoth and Maximus dragged underground by sex-crazed anarchist sewer rats? Come on, little buddy. Don't keep me in suspense. Obviously, the story was moving towards some mind-boggling final twist. So what was it? Max, what's wrong with... You. Little buddy? Keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. The ride is about to get twisty. <laughs> <laughs> 